very powerful that that's you know the thing that you know you remember the most because a lot of people aren't lucky enough to be able to have that experience and and I don't believe you know women are their most the, the worst critics you know they, they beat themselves up so much and they tell themselves that you know um, they don't sell themselves to themselves well you know they don't give themselves enough credit and for you you know if, if so do you find yourself trying to give that to other women nowadays? Yes, 100%. I mean, that's part of this mentoring is that... Any moment with him. All right. <laughs>
look at this Polymers, piece. they love art. Yeah, so this is see, beautiful. Oh my other. goodness. We have, uh, when you guys entered, there was uh, Murakami, Takashi Murakami at the entrance, uh -huh. the love heart one. This one is uh, turning. Love it. And there they are. I'm getting so excited. This is beautiful. Wow. Is this your artwork? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's my style. Oh yeah, I knew it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, wow. I know that caught your attention, babe. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't kiss you, I apologize. You know what? Uh, I'm not worth it anyway. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in here. Only today and yesterday it's raining. Mm -hmm. But if you come Saturday, Sunday, it's going to be sunny. If you invite us, we'll come back. Where <laughs> are you? Are you staying until when? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, do you, what do you prefer? Um, no, you have to be here. Oh, absolutely. You know what? Because if you have yes. a background yeah. of that, you have yes. a logo right here. Uh huh. Right there. You might. You mind if I take this off? Okay. okay. You know, they always try to see if my skirt. <laughs> <laughs> and you have only because I saw only this one on your Instagram. You have more? I we have like oh, yeah no, we no, have but a lot. This is the one Leggings? I see of yes. each time. I just posted that a couple times. Yeah, but exactly. We have That's 40 what I've seen. Yeah. yeah. She has over forty. Before we leave. Wow. Mm -hmm. So my friends, because it's Friday. Yes. Because I have a lot of work. Okay. I'm here to Thanks. answer any <laughs> question. <laughs> We're going to set up because I want to do a video for Anna Nicole. Okay. Anna Nicole Smith. I, I post one picture and I got bombarded with questions, yeah. good questions. So suddenly people think that they are expert of mental health. Mental health, because now it's a big subject, everybody, including like big guns like, I mean, Jevali. Mm -hmm. He has. I mean, and he talks openly about that. But suddenly, people tag themselves to say, oh, I'm an expert. They didn't even go to any medical school about it. They, they just read magazine, books, and said, oh, I'm an expert, really. And they, this is a complete fraud, fraud. And they recruit people to pay these people of fraud to get advice of mental health. What you're talking about? Who qualified that you are an expert? She, I mean, but it's not only that, it's, you see about people who say, oh, I am expert about food, about that, I know this, I know that, and then you dig in and you understand that they know nothing about food. I'm a big passion about food, I love food, okay? But what, food is not dangerous. I think what is dangerous for me is to see that people respond to certain unqualified, incapable, total fraud people who claim to be mental health 
advisor, an expert, where are the credentials? Why don't you put what you have done? For what hospital? For what doctor? For what university? And this is the fraud I see because my own, my own, some members of my family, directly or indirectly, had some issues, but you have professionals for that. And not to say Instagram, oh, come to me because I know what to do for you. And when half of the thing we talk about is about suicide. I mean, what about that? What about this? But they talk about suicide, suicide. It's outrageous how this is not regulated. How? Because teenagers watch that. And you see the latest report, what's happening with pandemic right now. In three months, in one county, there was 19 suicide of teenagers. 19. Now, the youngest being nine years old. Okay? It was on the news Monday. Nine years old. That's what I'm outraged to see that people claim to be, I'm an expert. Expert. How do I know that these people did not reach out to these fraud people and give the wrong advice? How do I know? How do we know as a parent? Mm -hmm. I have four kids. How do we know? I mean, this is not okay. Let's change the subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. It happened right now. Can I ask you a question? Please. Did she bug you? <laughs> no, she doesn't. She does. She didn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> She's a good girl. And I was happy when she opened up to say, you know, and that's off record. You know, make put off record. Oh. Oh. No, she doesn't. She does. She didn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> She's a good girl. And I was happy when she opened up to say, you know, and that's off record. You know, make put off record. Off record. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. I'm sorry? What is your role about that? What do I, what am what, I? Your role you in about this about industry now. Mm -hmm. on, oh. on that to advise a girl, guys, because not I only have, girls, but I, I know a lot of guys, and I know girls too, but it's an issue still. Yeah, what I is your main drive today? Drive, my drive today is like, I still model. My husband pushes me. I'm 42 and I'm able to model because, you know, we work as a team exclusively, yeah. and so we we work with companies and whatever and whatnot. But I have I'm very vocal about my issues. So I have other models in the industry, other women, reaching out and saying, "You inspired me. You want me to get clean. You want me to open up about my issue." They ask me questions. I I share my story. You know, I my publications are about opioid addiction. You know, so I can share more about it. So how did you have you a because I, as I mentioned. Some family members had this issue, and it's extremely hard to get out of that. Absolutely. How did you do? Many years I tried to get off. My mother, she was killed in a plane crash in 2011. She never got to see me clean. She fought all her life to get me clean. Couldn't do it, but was what helped me was finding him, getting out of my environment, falling in love with myself, stop talking to the people that I was talking to. I, lit to, I literally left... Uh, my state. I moved out of Chicago. I moved to Savannah, Georgia, where, where he lived. And, and he and he is your husband. Yeah. We, because we've his been name yeah. is your husband. The first name. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Chuck he, is, he is Chuck. Yeah. So, he's Chuck. He, so Chuck he saved basically, my life. Basically, was the turning point of he was. taking your destiny to say you you're better than that. You when, can do better than Absolutely. That. Yeah. I was so desperate. I lost all the hope. And he was doing women's retreats. I flew to him to, to do one of these retreats. So Chuck, at the time, your husband, was already involved in that before you. Absolutely. He was doing women's retreats. And I went there without having enough pills. And I told him on day one that I was going to go into withdrawal. So I'm like, here I am. I can't go back home. So take me as I am. You know, this is, this is going to get messy. And and next day I went into withdrawal seizures, all that good stuff. Ambulance and he was working for a magazine. The owner of the magazine had the same issue. So he told us where to go, who to see, and Suboxone was my savior. And we, we, what state was that when that happened? Georgia, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. And when you went to the hospital because of withdrawal, how many <laughs> days you stayed there? Oh, that's a good story. Can you tell that story what happened? Um, really quick. Yeah, when uh, when she came there, she said, I'm going to go into withdrawals. And I didn't know what that was. I said, okay, I was, I was, I'm a stylist too. I'm styling women, getting ready to shoot and everything. I said, okay, that's fine. And when she went through the withdrawals, 3 a.m. in the morning, they called the paramedics. Of course. And she left. And 
I'm in Savannah, Georgia, and the police were asking me, what are you doing here? Who are all these women? Are there any drugs here? So they start questioning me, the, the, uh, the, 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 the authorities. They start looking at me, and they were looking at me as if I was lying. So I had no clue about this. She went to the hospital. I walked into the hospital. The next day, four hours after she came through, they said, there's nothing we can do with her. This is the hospital. So I went to the head nurse and I said, hey, what can I do? You know, what can I do? Ah, she's a junkie. She's going to die if she doesn't get her act together. Yep, yep, yep. Head nurse. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not going to say the name of the hospital because that's not important. Is it, is it indiscreet to ask you? How many pills you are taking at that time? Oh, she oh, answers all. No, I, I, I have no, no secrets. I was taking, I was taking the strongest oxycodones, which were 80 milligrams, and I was taking five of them at a time. And I was taking them about every six hours. I was taking 20, 30 pills a day, on average, sometimes more. Wow. I'm, I'm going to add one more on, thing. On what? On what? I had two failed back surgeries, and my doctor. And so this is the same as mine. I mean, yeah. it, it started yeah. with a back surgery. Absolutely. Her husband, her, her, uh, her ex-husband ex yeah. used to beat her. He broke her back. So she goes to the to hospital surgery. To, to surgery yep. twice. Didn't help. So then they recommend that she goes through, you know, um, pain, specialist. pain specialist. You're a miracle. Absolutely. No, you're a miracle. You she was a miracle. They couldn't give her an IV because all of her veins were collapsed. They tried her legs, her ankles, her her neck. You know, um, they couldn't even give her an IV. So how many years did you meet? This is five years. Mm -hmm. So it's quite recent. Yeah. Yes. Quite recent. Mm -hmm. And this is five years ago. You were still mm -hmm. using that. You're here, right? Can you pause? Yes. Uh, I mean, what about that? What about this? That they talk about suicide, suicide. It's outrageous. How this is not regulated? How? Because teenagers watch that. And you see the latest report, what's happening with the pandemic right now. In three months, in one county, it was 19 suicides of teenagers. 19. Now, the youngest being nine years old. Okay? It was on the news Monday. Nine years old. That's what I'm outraged to see that people claim to be, I'm an expert, expert. How do I know that these people did not reach out to these fraud people and give the wrong advice? How do I know? How do we know as a parent? Mm -hmm. I have four kids. How do we know? I mean, this is not okay. Let's change the subject. Okay, it happened right now. Can I ask you a question? Please. Did she bug you? Oh. No, she doesn't. She does. She didn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she would go. And I was happy when she opened up to see, you know. And that's off record. You know, make put off record. Off record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when you first seen a profile and you um, uh, came across it, what caught your attention? The story, the emotion. Thing? Well, mainly. Vilma and I, we started to, because she commented on my posting, and I replied, a lot, of, a lot of people are replied, a lot. And, but then, more I posted, and more she had some kind of the, the fashion show, the model I post, the, the place I go, and more we developed to discuss more about. And uh, then, I see that she was a model at one point, definitely, because the picture she posted, definitely she is beautiful as a model. And it has to be, uh, I mean, something that she has done in the past also, and maybe even present now, depending what you do. And I was very curious about them. One day she opened up about... Okay. One. So when you first seen her profile and you um, uh, came across it, what caught your attention? The story? The emotion? The well, mainly, uh, Vilma and I, we started to, because she commented on my posting, and I replied, a lot of, a lot of people I replied, a lot. And, but then, more I posted, and more she had some kind of the, the fashion show, the model I post, uh, the place I go, 
and more we develop to discuss more about and uh, then I see that she was a model at one point definitely because the picture she posted definitely she's beautiful as a model and it has to be uh, I mean something that she has done in the past also and maybe even present now depending what you do and I was very curious about them one day she opened up about what has been a struggle for her and that went straight to my heart to me to see well wow I mean the fact that she took a courage to open to me about that not thinking about oh what is going to think about was this no she was totally transparent totally open totally genuine about and said and I just went through that and if I can help even one person to don't go through that that would be my win and that touched me a lot and she said can I come one day with my partner my husband and visit with you and do a picture I said of course and she wanted to come in Europe <laughs> and I said where are you located she said in US I said where many places okay where we come anywhere <laughs> I said, but you're not going to come for a picture in Switzerland. She said, well, we will. Uh -huh. And I said, slow down here. Okay, slow down. I, I am in This US. is the first time I hear this, but go ahead. <laughs> I said, I am in base in California. Uh -huh. And she said, well, we're in California right now. I said, okay, where? Yeah, north of California. Uh -huh. I said, I'm back from Switzerland. Come with your partner, Mr. Chuck, and come to meet me at guests. But it's my first back my first week back at work after Switzerland so I'm jammed with work but I said I would make the time to see you and the fact that now she's dedicating a lot of her time for others goes back to respect others believe and hope that you can even if she touch one this week one next week one another week each one is a huge win not for the girl, for her, to not have another Vilma hanging around in a hospital to say, she's a junk, let her die, let her die. I mean, as simple as that. The biggest thing, correct? Absolutely. I think I've learned and achieved more than she has because I overlooked a lot of things. And it was very good for me to see the first time when she said, when people came to her, when she opened up, and they said, oh my God, you're so strong. That was the high that she had been looking for all her life. Yeah. Real people saying real things, not just some guy being nice because he wanted something else. Yeah. These were, it was a little girl and it was, exactly. the, it was the old one. That was real. Chuck, is it correct that you will, how long have you been doing that? These retreats? These retreats about 15 years. Okay. 37 in, years in photography. In, in 15 years. Mm -hmm. Is it maybe one of the worst case that you have seen with Vilma that she was basically a lost case? Let me tell you something, sir. If you do not have knowledge, you cannot calculate exactly. judgment. So I walk through life blind. I, I have passed through so many Vilmas in my life. So many Vilmas have went to the grave because I had no idea of what was going on. And when she came to me and I didn't see this, I was like, how can I miss this? It was a learning curve that came to you. Yes, through her. Through her. To All of this through her. My life is better now. Her life is better now because I understood. But you are trying to make life of others better. Now. This is what this your is what mission. we do. That's my mission right now. That's is your to, message. That's the, that's speak the, up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out. What she, to she, say. <laughs> because you are the one who went through that. Right? Yes. Yeah you were on a tunnel and there was no light in that tunnel none Absolutely. none none how bright is the light today oh my god tell us we want to know That's true. i'm here with paul marciano it doesn't get any better <laughs> <laughs> beside that when you wake up in the morning do you thank God every day? Absolutely. Like we, what are your I'm, what are your blessing that you have when you wake up and you're on your feet and you're okay and you are healthy? What are you doing? Who um, are you? 
You do pray a little bit, five minutes? I, I, I do. I'm not religious, no, not but religious. I speak I to said, my mother. To see yeah, things. exactly. I'm, I'm exactly. spiritual. Yeah, I do speak to my mother, and I'm thankful that, you know, some even coming here, even with the rain, I took a short video. There was a rainbow about 30 minutes before we got here. And it, it just, it things sign. like that makes me emotional. I just cry, you know, out of happiness. So, what are your, what are you, your, gratefulness every day you must thank your mom you must thank your house you must thank chuck every day five minutes to say i just i'm thankful about that do you i i do not enough but you actually should. talking to you right now is gonna you make should. me i do that for 27 do years that every more. day mm -hmm. i don't have coffee i don't have a piece of bread mm -hmm. or breakfast before i do my thank god that's a very world. good thing every day mm -hmm. it takes six minutes my kids, my wife, my children, my friend, my brother, everything. But all that takes six minutes. Mm -hmm. And you start the day already focused and stabilized. And not to jump out of bed, go to breakfast, get in a car, go to work. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. What six minutes will change in your life? Nothing. But you can, I mean, my life is nothing compared to yours. Mm -hmm. You came out of hell, of hell, of basically guaranteed death. And you should be thankful every day that some, my belief, because that's my mom always tell me that, an angel is always watching. Mm -hmm. And watching above you to take care of you. And the angel came and said, okay, are you busy, Chuck? Are you free? Can you take care of this girl? You said, uh, no, this week I'm not, I can't, but next week I could. <laughs> okay, okay, the assignment is Vilma, okay, all right. That was it. Because it's not an accident. Mm -hmm. I am I'm a big believer in that. A thousand percent sure it's not an accident. Mm -hmm. He came for a mission. Yeah. And through that, he got better. Mm -hmm. Certain things to learn so much. And together, this energy gives an incredible power to help others. Mm -hmm. And that is today your mission. Because normally, if he was not there, you should not be here anymore. You should be somewhere else. Yeah. You should be gone. I'm sorry, but Another that's Another thing, if I was gone, my son probably would have been gone too. My son is 22 now. I've been gleaning for five years. He had dropped out of school. He couldn't, he became very awkward socially. He couldn't communicate. He was because not going her mom, anywhere. Because her, his mom was absent. Yeah. Now he's back in life. He has two jobs. He's a manager. He's, he's Where does he calls stay? calls me every day in Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. and, and you are completely reconnected with him. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But they were not I know. five years ago. Me. We couldn't even communicate it's together, me and my him. son. I keep telling you, it's not him. Okay. An angel came yes. through him and said, we're going to help you. I keep calling him an angel. That's the okay. reason. Now I know why. This is it. <laughs> we're done. Boy, that's a lot of weight on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> You've been carrying it all along, baby. I got to go there waiting for all me. All right, let's go. The one that it's good is the one on, on the stairs with the, it's a, yeah. I think we're good. You're good? Mm -hmm. Here too?